as I understand assault and battery, and just from a lay person's point of view, uh, the assault part of it is the verbal abuse. Do you feel that some of these um, high school bullies should come under greater scrutiny from law enforcement? Well, it's the bullies deserve to have a lot of scrutiny placed on them. And once again, they can be helped also. Uh, these are children who've learned these patterns somewhere. They just didn't pick these patterns up by themselves. That could be a family issue. It could be uh, an issue that they've seen in other ways. Uh, so that you need intervention with them just as much as you need intervention of the victims of the bullies. And uh, I think that's something that, uh, when I say entirely solvable, what I mean is that people know that this is occurring. This just doesn't happen in a vacuum. The kids go home and tell their parents or they tell other kids uh, that they've been bullied and you've got other kids who everybody in the school knows who the bullies are. It's got to be a, an effort of everybody in that school and that tiny community uh, to start bringing some help to both sides of that because the breaking point comes and we find that these students go back to where the, the they had the worst uh, nightmare of their life uh, in terms of these things happening and that's where that occurs. And they're going back to the they're campuses. They're going back to get even. Mm -hmm. To get even. So your message today is one of early identification, prevention and intervention and cooperation with community resources, it's, the police. It's all, it's all of those things. And it, the early intervention and the work that um, we can do to relieve stress and talk about the stresses. Uh, kids today are under an enormous amount of pressure to get into colleges. Um, you know, when I was young, you know, parents didn't worry about that as much. There were a lot of vocational tracks that you could go into. Now everything is pointed to college. And the stress on these kids is absolutely unbelievable from early on until they finally get somewhere and then it's, it plays out in different ways and we know stress in police officers is mm -hmm. not good. It'll always come out in one way or another. It's the same with uh, everybody else and the more you can do to relieve that stress and help people cope with it, I think the fewer incidents like this we see. It's very kind of you to give us so much of your time and your perspective and speaking of stress, <laughs> uh, a little token of our gratitude is this stress puzzle. His name is Benny, so now you are a friend with well, benefits. Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate having the stress ball. <laughs> you might need it today. <laughs> that will conclude, but I have a personal question I have to ask you. I watched you as mayor um, lose a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. You obviously took fitness on as a personal challenge. Would you be willing to share with me what you did? Well, I, you know, I, I got to be pretty large, and I just decided that that isn't something I wanted. So when I was getting close to turning 60, probably about a year ahead of that, I just decided to do something about it. So I, um, I'd been going to a gym for a while with a trainer, uh, and he said, you're not losing weight, so let's figure this out. And we just set up a program. I don't diet. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I cut out some things, ice cream and Mexican food, things that <laughs> you know you shouldn't have been eating anyway, and then really started exercising a lot. So it's been about a three or four year time frame and lost about 90 pounds. And I get, 90 pounds, so I wow. So I work out several times a week with a trainer, but I also get 50, 60 miles in every week, and that helps to, it helps to balance me. We really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. You're welcome.